Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first episode of Mike's and Mustangs. Uh, Mike's and Mustangs is a podcast for Stevens University Athletics and uh, features student athletes, coaches, and staff. What's your name? My name is Jaheim Anderson. I'm a senior wide receiver here at uh, Stevenson. My name is Jaden Harris. I'm a junior guard on the women's basketball team here at Stevenson. Okay, so now we're going to uh, introduce uh, the man that needs no introduction. Um, <laughs> that would be uh, the athletic director here at Stevenson University, Brett Adams. Hi, welcome. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm really pleased to be a part of the show. I'm pleased to have you. <laughs> Yeah, so today we'll be diving into a little bit of your background and your history, um, a little bit in your college career, um, how and why you began coaching, and uh, a little a bit into how you transitioned into becoming an athletic director. So okay. if you don't mind diving into um, your college career. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, well, I played college, I mean, played college basketball initially in Vermont. I, I grew up in Vermont. I'm a native of Bell's. I went to Bell's Free Academy, native of St. Albans in Fairfield, Vermont, and was honorable mention all state in basketball. And so I was recruited by uh, a number of schools, but in particular Johnson State College, which is now Northern Vermont University. Um, they were dual members back then. They were NAIA and NCA. And so I was on a small out on the back <laughs> athletic scholarship there um, and had a great freshman year. It was really a great experience. Um, uh, the coaching uh, went through a coaching change that year. Um, actually, in the middle of the year, the athletic director stepped down, who was also a basketball coach, and the assistant coach, uh, Coach Selkowitz, took over, and he was actually a great coach. But at the end of the year, they changed athletic directors and coaching staff, so we had a new coach and went um, from a really great freshman experience to an experience that wasn't really – um, fantastic. We had retention issues on the team and, and so on. And, you know, I got into basketball in high school. You know, we grew up in a really big hockey community. I'm um, actually John LeClaire, the Hall of Famer from Philadelphia. Flyers actually is from my high school, but, but hockey was expensive. And so basketball was not expensive. So our family didn't have a lot of money. So basketball was my sport. Um, so again, in college, I didn't have a lot of money either. And so ended up taking a year off. And during that year off, I worked at a correctional center as a main control and operator and security guard at 11 at night to seven in the morning. I was a substitute teacher at a middle school. And then I coached the freshman high school basketball team and saved all my money to go so I go back to school. And so then I was looking for a division three school because there was anyone offering me an athletic scholarship at that time. And I landed at York College of Pennsylvania. Um, very pleased I did that. Uh, there's a, I played for and coached with a legendary coach there, Coach Gamber. Um, I had to sit out a year and was a manager that year. And then I played my junior, senior year as a captain my senior year and was fortunate enough that they offered me an opportunity to be an assistant basketball coach. Wow. Um, uh, and I, I was a math major and a computers major in college and graduated with honors and all that stuff. Um, and I thought I was going to get into the world of insurance. So I um, actually started working for Allstate while I was a part-time basketball coach um, and uh, didn't particularly care for that that much. In addition to that, um, they didn't have a women's tennis team, but they offered me the head women's tennis position while I was there because it because the head, the assistant men's basketball coach paid all of $792 a year, which I split with another assistant coach. But they paid me $2,400 to be the head women's tennis coach. And, of course, I played for Coach Gamber, who was also the athletic director. And I said, well, Coach Gamber, I didn't know we had a women's tennis team. And he said, well, we haven't had a women's tennis team for the last five years because of a lack of interest. And I said, well, what's the expectation? He said, well, if you have a team at the end of the year, that'll be more than any team in the last five years. That'll be a success. And again, they paid me $2,400 for that position. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'll take it. And it gave me my first head coaching experience at 24 years old. Um, and I learned very quickly as an arrogant college basketball player that um, I had a lot to learn about women and women's sports. And because when I went to the tennis practices, the women on the team very much cared about what they're doing. They love and worked really hard. They were very coachable. And yet no one came to see them. In basketball, everyone came to see us. And Jaheim and football, you can probably imagine that everyone comes to see you play. 
but it really made sure I made the, my commitment and attention to that team because it was really important. And so when I became an athletic director, uh, women's sports are really important to me because I know all the values that we get for the men's, the women get as well. And all the challenges too. The women have all the challenges too. Um, so two years into um, working at Allstate and being a part-time coach, um, a position opened up an admissions at York and I full-time. So I took the full-time position. Um, that was three years. And by then our women's tennis team after my we won the Team GP Award every year for five years with the women's tennis team. After um, the third year, we were regionally ranked. In our fourth and fifth year, we had a couple of players nationally ranked. And so I was actually known as the women's tennis coach and, oh, by the way, the assistant basketball coach. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, Mark Hergen, who is the vice president and dean of enrollment management here, um, was the new uh, director of admissions at Villa Julie College. It was what we, Stevenson was known before. Um, and uh he knew me through admissions because Villa Julie College and York College on the tables at the college fairs were right next to each other. And he knew how I was recruiting and stuff like that. So he referred me to the president to be the first athletic director at Villa Julie and Stevenson. So, yeah. So that's how it all came about. So I thought I was going to be this actuarial math genius working corporate America. And I fell in love with coaching fell in love with college athletics. And I really didn't initially what didn't really have the desire to be the athletic director. Initially, I just wanted to coach and make a difference. Um, and so my first year here, I was the first, I mean, I've been the athletic director for 30 years, but I've been the AD from day one, but I was the men's and women's tennis coach as well as started the men's basketball program here. Wow. So, so yeah, how fun is that? We have a celebrity. No, no, no. <laughs> you guys are the celebrity. We're just making it work. No. I had no idea you started off at York. Um, yeah. So when you were offered that head coach position at, um, to be the head coach for women's tennis, did you have to go out and recruit or were there? Absolutely. Women, well, no. So I, I, I recruited on campus first, um, uh, but then I took a lot of the basketball because back then, there weren't a lot of full-time tennis coaches. I mean, the, a lot of the ADs were actually basketball coaches or football coaches too. So back then, the, a lot of Division threes they had double duty. Um, so uh, with, um, with that, I knew how difficult basketball recruiting was and um, coaching philosophies. And if you're a really good coach, you're a coach that you continue to learn. If you're done learning, you're probably not going to last in coaching very long. And you you learn from it, everyone else. So I took a lot of basketball recruiting strategies and philosophies. And then in two years later, I'm working in admissions. And so then I'm my full-time job is in recruitment and then building the team. So, um, But no, we finished the team the year that year with 13 players, and which was a huge success. And we only needed to finish with six. And, um, and I think they had a really great experience. And yeah, I was very fortunate to have really great student athletes who bought in and were committed and really excited about women's tennis making it, you know, meaning something on campus. Nice. Yeah, I mean, our only AD like ever. Yeah, that's yeah. it's kind of crazy. I uh, just think about it. And what was the span from uh, being the assistant coach on the basketball team at York? to becoming the athletic director at Villa Julie. So I got hired as the assistant basketball coach and head women's tennis coach in 1989. Okay. 1994, five short years later, I'm the new athletic director at Stevenson. Wow. Um, I was 28 years old, so actually less than five years. Um, and I was the youngest athletic director in the nation at the time, um, in the NCAA. Yeah. So. Celebrity indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, was, let me be really no, candid, though, here. too. Villa Julie at the time had just started. We only had 54 athletes. We had a budget of $84,000. That included my salary and eight part-time coaches' salaries. With 54 athletes, and we only had well, – they had eight sports before they hired me. I added three that year, including men's basketball and men's women's tennis and so on. Um, think about 54 players. Well, if you have 20-some-on on a soccer team and lacrosse, 20-some-on and – I mean – I had the athletes who had to play all three sports. Wow. I mean, they had to play all three seasons or else we couldn't have met sports sponsorship. No way. Uh, 
So how did that go about? Did you guys have to have conversation with that? Oh, yeah. Or? So I made the basketball team because we didn't have a gym at the time. I made the basketball team run cross country. Wow. Because okay. I needed to fill out the cross country roster. <laughs> oh, you want to play basketball, you got to run cross country, <laughs> oh, wow. which helped them get in shape. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, sure. and we had a couple of cross players that ran cross country, but most of the soccer players also played the cross and field hockey. We had field hockey for women, women's soccer, and many of them played women's across in the spring. We had indoor track even back then, even though we had no indoor facility. So the fall sports had to participate in indoor track so we could use it as a sponsored sport because you had to sponsor a men's and women's sport, one in each season. Wow. Um, and you had to have minimum of four men, four women. So you had to have one in each season. So indoor track for the women was our first. And then the following year, I added women's basketball because nice. men's basketball was such a success. Wow. All these rules and regulations. You yeah. have math degrees. <laughs> Do you yeah. utilize that at all? Well, so I finished with a degree in computers. And of course, okay. computers, um, I thought it was going to be my profession, but I use it every day. And right. then of course, math and their budgets and yeah. projections and, and then also the creative ideas of, you know, building something from scratch. That's very mathematical in mine. Um, but I was surprised because I was not a strong English student. I was a strong yeah. math student. Um, but as an athletic director, you learn how to write and you learn how to communicate and so on. So, um, but both have served me well, both computers, math, and later on English. Um, yeah. And when you came over to Villa Julie, um, was it still all females? Or So when I was hired, we were 92% female. We had about 35% of our students were two-year stu two degree students because we still had two-year degree programs. Um, so we read, roughly had about 105 males on campus. So um, trying to fill out rosters and so on. But, and that was part of the goal. So part of the reason they hired me, too, is I understood about recruitment and admissions but I also understood about athletics too. And, and York was very good at the time. Um, and we were nationally ranked in basketball and, and we were, had a couple of players nationally ranked in tennis as well. So I knew about the athletic piece, but I also knew that I needed to help Mark Hergen, the admissions group and the institution build the enrollment. So, so little story too, that you didn't know, I was also the first resident director. Wow. So when I, <laughs> So when I came here on campus, I needed a place to stay, but I also knew that we needed to recruit outside of the region. Yeah. And at the time we had no housing. We had 28 students living in an extended stay residence at a Comfort Inn, which was right off from Reisterstown Road. And you know where the target is on Reisterstown Road yeah. at 695? There was a extended stay residence back there. So I was the first full-time employee who was the resident director. We had 28 students. The next year we had 42 the following year, 96, oh, wow. and then 125. And so, and we were growing it through recruiting and athletics. Yeah. As you know, in athletics, yeah. you can't just recruit students within 30 minutes. Yeah. So, that's true. Wow. I haven't let you guys talk at all. I just keep even rambling no, on. Good. It's all great stuff. It's, just, it's great information. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So, when you got to Villa Julie, there were eight sports. Yep. Uh, we have now currently have 29 sports. NCA yeah. varsity sports, or 28 NCA sports, 29 varsity sports. And then we have 10 club teams as well. Wow. So we have about 700 NCAA athletes now and about another 180 club sport athletes. Wow. If you don't mind, walk us through that journey of uh, adding a new sport, uh, what it takes, um, what are the requirements for males and females? Like, How does that all work? So if you can't tell, I'm really a strong believer of Title IX and gender equity. Just my experience as the women's tennis coach, I knew how important it was. And quite frankly, we had a really large female population on campus. We need to serve all of our students. Um, so how do we add a sport? Um, so some of the biggest misconceptions that I think a lot of athletic directors have is that you have to have all the pieces to the puzzle before you start to build it. And that's not necessarily true. We started basketball. We didn't have a gym. The gym on the other campus, that wasn't built yet. I actually helped design that gym. We actually started at Maryvale Prep and St. Paul School for Girls was our practice facility. Wow. And that's where we played our games. And we had to rent the gym. We started baseball and softball without fields. We were down at Joe Cannon Stadium down in Annapolis yeah. or Anne Arundel County and um, Bachman Field and so on. We started baseball and softball without facilities. Actually, the only few facilities that we had when we started was football. We built the stadium because of football but, and then volleyball. So when we built the gym on the other campus, we were building a gym, so we were going to add men's and women's volleyball. Wow. But other than that, so the first thing is um, make sure we have the interest in the market. If it's not on campus, we can, like we started hockey without having any ice hockey players on campus. 
But we have to look at the market. Is the market right for students who want our education and play a sport? Second, you hire a coach. Third, ideally get in the league because being an independent is really, really hard. Um, so then you build the schedule and then you figure out your practices. I mean, right now we have swimming, but we don't have a pool, but we have great neighbors in the McDonough. And so, so basically, um, schedule coach budget, um, facilities, and you start building it. I believe that entrepreneurial spirit is a really important part of our student athletes experience. Just because it hasn't been done doesn't mean we don't do it. And just because it's hard doesn't mean we don't do it. And just because it um, it wasn't there, it's important that you get other people to buy into it because then they can see that part of the vision. It's not just my vision. Right. It's our it's our campus's vision. Um, and I think that's really powerful for you as students when you have that entrepreneurial disposition of, of course, we can do it. And it's not there. And then it is there and all of the impact that that makes. Athletics has clearly, you know, grown its prominence. Um, it seems like you built a huge brick house, brick by brick. Uh, what was your support system like as you developed this brick house? Well, um, well, the first I have to say, I have to always had the support of the upper administration because mm-hmm. I was hired to build an athletic department with an academic component. We talked about winning the academic award each year and how mm-hmm. empowering it was for our student athletes. And I really believe that when student athletes get strong grades and they feel self-respect. I believe that people look at them different. I believe faculty respect them. And that is so empowering that never leaves you. So I felt if I could build the academic component as their main structure of building athletic, I really believe smart people don't fail. They, if you want to start, you're, figure, you're going to figure it out because smart people, yeah. are just, it's just another puzzle. They're going to figure it out. So I felt if I built the foundation that way, I knew I'd have the faculty support and the administration support. Plus, I believed it. That was my philosophy right. as a student. I wanted to be known as a smart student athlete. Yeah. The second is I've had a great family support, both my parents and my brothers and sister, but most importantly, my wife, Linda, who I met a couple of years into taking the job here. And then shortly thereafter, a year later, we had our daughter, Emma. And then Emma's grown up with Villa Julie and Stevenson. And of course, my wife has been really supportive as well. Okay. It's really hard to coach basketball, men's and women's tennis and run an athletic department if you don't have support behind oh, yeah. you. And um, little secret, she's a 1981 um, graduate of Villa Julie College. Wow. Um, so long before they had sports. Wow. So, so I've had that support both on campus. I've had the support at home. Um, and then Many of you know that my daughter Emma actually ended up coming to Stevenson and was a field hockey player. What I didn't know when I was building all of this, that my daughter would come here and that she would be proud of her dad of how we built women's athletics and how we respect both men and women's sports here. Love that. Yeah. Well, also, I wanted to know about a favorite story that you have during Mm -hmm. your career uh, with college basketball or men's basketball, Mm -hmm. uh, women's tennis. And also cross country. Oh well, I I had guys run cross country. Okay. I wasn't coaching cross okay, country. Okay. Carol Zimmerman was coaching cross country. Wow, lots of stories. Um, probably so. One when I first started, the field that's on the Green Spring campus was not level. If you stood on one corner of the field and then you looked diagonally on the other corner of the field, if the player was five foot or shorter, you couldn't see them. Wow. That's how much of a dip there was. Wow. <laughs> oh um, and there was a flag in the middle of the field and we had to blast the flag at, you know, because it was based, it had a concrete base and stone. We had to blast the rock and the flag out. And then we, so we didn't have the money um, to redo the field, but so we, we found some money to get it graded. And then we got the sod and not, not just me, but Scott Duncan and our rest of our staff and the students helped lay the sod on the field on the other campus. Um, that was one. Uh, we had no money either to, I mean, our budget was $84,000. Um, uh, we played three tournaments in basketball because they gave us guarantee money. And then we drove the vans. So one of the tournaments we played our first year was in Kentucky. So we drove out to Kentucky to play two division or NAI division two schools. Um one of them had the Mr. Basketball of Kentucky on their team from the year before who transferred from Louisville. Um, wow. but we drove out there because the guarantee money, drove in vans, and then 
because there was a storm coming and we didn't have the money to stay overnight. Again, as soon as the game was done, we showered, changed, got in the vans and drove all night um, to stay ahead of the storm. Um, we rolled into campus at eight o'clock and I told the guys they all need to go to class because class started at eight a.m. <laughs> no way. You told them to go to class? Uh, well, they had to. We're, we built yeah. an academic yeah. program. Yeah. Right. Academic all the way. So later Student they told advice. me that they went into class and made sure that they walked to class because I was watching them because we only had two right. buildings. I could see where they went. And as soon as they walked in, um, they waited till my car left and then they walked out and, <laughs> out and slept. They, anyway. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, really seeing it, uh, like starting to come together uh, brick by brick, like Jaden was saying. Yeah. Um, last but not least, um, I know as a player, you have coaches that influence you. Yep. And um, you taking that step from becoming a basketball player to an assistant coach to becoming a head coach and then becoming an athletic director, which of those ph- philosophies uh, throughout that time you used to kind of build your, you know? Wow, coach? I think you take every, something from every part, you know? Um, as a player, um, I was very fortunate to make the varsity, but I made the team because I had a great attitude and I worked really hard. I made it my junior year, and I was my one of my best friends was Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson led the state in scoring at 32 points a game. I guarded him in practice every day, yeah. and he was my best friend. Um, and so I ended up learning how to play defense. And then my senior year, I had a very successful senior year and a very successful freshman year. But when I transferred to York, they had a lot of really re- good recruits at York. And so um, they didn't have a spot for me. So I ended up basically getting cut that year. But I stayed on as a manager mm-hmm. and to sit out anyway. But um, And I went from not making the team to being in, um, in the top eight the next year. But I didn't get the playing time. And I, and I worked really hard. I stayed there during the summer. I played in summer league. I got up every morning at 7 a.m to work out in the gym because I knew coach Gamber showed up at eight and I were early one my workout. And actually that summer only uh, three other times did another player meet me that morning. Cause I invited him every day to come work out right. with me. I'll get my skills, yeah. and whatever. One player came twice. One player came once and they like, they're not doing that again. Okay. And then in the afternoon um, they had pickup. And then of course I was a math student in computer. So I worked at York hospital doing biostatistics and research for the obstetrics and gynecology department. Cause I, needed money. Wow. And then I was also taking classes, but it, my, one of the big, in, the other influences that um, I failed and I got back up again and to yeah. the point where my senior year, I was a starter and a captain at York, but it was from being cut to being making the team to being a starter and captain. So I, I don't, when students come to me and they are concerned, they're not getting playing time. Well, change that coaches, our coaches want to play players who are going to help them win. Yeah. And if you're going to help them win and you're coachable, that was a really important piece. And so in this day and age, I actually guide a lot of students who are concerned about playing time and stuff. Um, it, it's part of the process. Failure is just part of the process. It's not defining. So I think that failure as an athlete really helped me because we've had a lot of failures as coaches. We've had a lot of failures. As, I mean, I had a 2-21 and season. I had a 2-23 and season right. after going to the NCAA tournament back to back, attitude yeah. twenty three season, but it doesn't define you. It, it, you get back up and you go at it, and you start to solve another puzzle. Um, so, um, as athletic director, I feel like I've been able to make a difference in a lot of student athletes' lives. I do miss coaching, but I miss the impact I've had on the students. But I have a different impact at this level. Well. Thank you for tuning in and thank yeah. you, Brett, for joining <laughs> us. So uh, we found out we have a celebrity here. No, no. This is a legend right here. Back, yeah. So uh, we mm-hmm. definitely appreciate you and your time. Uh, make sure to follow us on Go Mustang Sports on Instagram, Threads, X, and TikTok. Uh, subscribe to Stevenson Athletics' YouTube channel. And last but not least, look out for more Mike's and Mustangs coming your way. <laughs>